Hi Trader, welcome to Elite Currency. My name is Chris. This time around, part 11 of the Fibonacci series, where I take a look at the Fibonacci tool and where to place the stop loss. First of all though, be aware that trading for exchange and other financial products is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all traders. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar and, educate and video is for educational and informational purposes only. By continuing watching this video, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading Forex. Before I dive into the topic, be aware that we have great webinars for free coming up on Heiken Ashi, Reigns Bars, a new system called Harp, and many live trading webinars. So join the webinars, write to info at EliteCurrency.com and get the info about the dates. Let's start talking about stop losses and fibs. Of course, not a very pleasant topic because let's face it, it is not a fun activity because it reminds us of losing trades. The good news is that stop losses do keep a trader from risking their account, entire account, plus of course placing them with the FIB is relatively simple. So let's talk about why. First of all, what are the issues when using a stop loss? And that is often enough that traders use tight stop losses. This creates a lot of danger and is hazardous for the account. How come? Well, the Forex market loves to move up and down, loves volatility and loves to retest price zones. This is the noise that the market makes and basically due to that noise the market tests a lot of levels and hits a lot of stop losses. So our stop loss in general is very vulnerable to that. Now especially if traders use tight stop losses and this is something that occurs regularly. In that case market volatility has the tendency due to its choppy price action to hit those levels. All right. So what is the solution? Well, the idea is using invalidation levels. That is the key. First, an example on the chart here, a price action like this, very choppiness on the four hour your dollar would hit a lot of stop losses on average. So let's talk about that invalidation level. Why is that good? Well, basically it's simple. Place it at the spot where your analysis is invalidated if price pushes beyond that point. So what is the benefit of that? Well, you exit the trade at a loss only if the analysis is proven incorrect. Therefore, you're not psycholog psychologically annoyed with that loss. Many traders do not place a stop loss at such an invalidation level. They put the stop loss in the middle of price action and they see their stop loss get hit. All right. But often enough, then see their analysis turn out to be right. And that, of course, is extremely annoying. Have you ever happened that or ever seen that your trade is actually turning into a loss, but your analysis was correct and the market turns around into your expected direction after you get taken out? All of us have seen that. And that's because we're using a too tight stop loss just because we want to increase our lot size. We want to be able to take a bigger position and, of course, therefore, like the tighter stop loss. The nasty problem though with being overly aggressive with a tight stop loss is that losses lead to revenge trading, over risking and other nasty and costly bad habits. So using the validation level, okay, perhaps a smaller lot size, but this does create a peace of mind because a stop loss would only be triggered if the market is indeed turning into a different direction. So let's talk a bit about that invalidation level with the FIBs. Well, it's actually ultra simple. The stop loss should always go below or above the 100 mark. It's that simple. In this case, below the 100 mark because we're looking at a bullish FIB where I'm FIBing from left to right or from low to high in this case. And in this case, price, of course, is retracing back to the downside and looking for bounces to the upside. It's a bullish FIB. The stop loss, the invalidation level actually is below that bottom where I have the purple box at the bottom, that is the validation level. So the stop loss should go below it. And that is then the correct level. Because if price breaks to that level, then the FIB is not valid anymore. And the whole setup is not correct. The whole setup is indeed false. And the trade was just a loss that happens and was perhaps wrongly analyzed, perhaps just unlucky. So the bottom or top of the Fibonacci level is where the trade and analysis is invalidated. And that's the appropriate level. Now, of course, that is why also FIB placement is so important 
and it's so important to find an appropriate plus sturdy swing for that fib. Now perhaps you finally understand better why I emphasized placing the fib on the correct swing or the correct leg in the previous four videos. The fib tool not only indicates the entries and targets, but as you can see, also the correct stop loss level. So make sure to, to use the correct swing and the correct fib and take a look at those previous videos. Personally, I tend to place the stop loss a few pips away from the bottom or top. On our chart, it could be five to 10 pips. On a four hour chart, perhaps 10 to 20. I like to provide a bit more leeway for my trades just in case price retests the bottom or top. So I do not go one pip below that level. I like to give a bit more space. Some traders do like to place the fibs in the middle of price action. And this of course is possible, although I just indicated that it's not ideal, it could make sense in certain positions and certain scenarios. Realize that you do need a sufficient experience to know when this is okay and when this spells danger, right? Stop losses just beyond a strong fib level can work out fine and offer better reward to risk ratios. Then this is okay. The key element is to have sufficient confluence on the charts at that particular level. Let's take a look at this example, dollar-yen daily chart. Here we can see 78.6 FIB in that black box. What kind of confluence do we see? Well, we see a minus 61.8 target at the same level. We see two trend lines. We see an AO that shows strong upside and a retracement to the downside. We see also a general uptrend as well. So there are a lot of confluences that allow the trader to take perhaps a trade at the 78.6 FIB but place the stop loss below the 88.6 FIB instead of perhaps the 100 mark, saving about 80 pips in this case. So in those cases you see a generally solid reason to do it. Also the daily chart of course is a long-term chart, a bit sturdier perhaps than a small chart like 5 or 15 minute ch uh, candles and charts. So make sure to join our webinars, our free webinars, live trading webinars, Harp, Heikonashi, Rainbards, and more topics right to info at EliteCurrency.com. Join the list. Take a look at our YouTube channels as well, Elite Currency and Admiral Marcus. And thank you so much for listening. Happy trading.